An Analysis of Poe's Legia and the Fall of the House of Usher. The use of an opening quote was a very common element in Poe's short stories. He usually sought for this opening quote to contain an important idea that connected to the story's main theme. The opening quote of Legia reads, And the will therein lieth, which dieth not. Who knoweth the mysteries of the will, with its vigor? For God is but a great will, pervading all things by nature of its intentness. Man doth not yield himself to the angels, nor unto death utterly, save only through the weakness of his feeble will. Within this quote, Poe reveals that he believed that the divine, or God, was the original energy of the universe. Humans participate in this divine energy, and human beings only die because their will becomes too weak. In other words, we no longer have enough of that original divine energy left. This quote also implies that if one is not, one's will is not feeble, he or she can potentially escape death. Music is an important element in many of Poe's stories. He believed that complex harmony, particularly that of string music, could bring back echoes of this lost state of original unity. The character Legia seems to speak from and reside in this world. Therefore, her presence and her voice are associated with string music. Images of a decaying society are extremely commonplace in Poe's writing. These stories almost always take place in old Europe and involve aristocratic characters. The focus on de a decaying or old society allow for the final step of decay, death or destruction, as a necessary part of destructive transcendence. Beauty and fixation are key issues within the story Legia. The story suggests that some sort of strangeness is necessary for true beauty. Notice the narrator's mention of Legia's eyes. Poe and many others believe the eyes to be the windows to the soul. It's very common for Poe's protagonist to become oddly fixated on a particular physical element, usually of a beautiful woman. For example, in Poe's story Bernice, the main character feels he must possess the woman's teeth. This issue of fixation can also be seen in the famous story, The Telltale Heart, in which the narrator fixates on his neighbor's evil eye. There's a poem in the middle of Legia, written by the character Legia herself. It deals with the theme of death, but rather than presenting death as glorious or spiritual, she refers to the conqueror worm. In other words, this is viewing death as the end, an earthly end and an end to all potential existence. After Legia's death, he, uh, the main character marries Lady Rowena, who is Legia's opposite. A common theme in Poe's writings is the idea of rooms being somewhat alive, or reflecting the mood of the characters. In this story, the bridal chamber reflects the main character's mind. It's somber, evoking of the dead. It also appears to be pulsing, almost like it's alive. Lady Rowena's illness makes her extremely nervous, and she first suggests that the draperies are almost alive. Now, just to be clear in terms of what happens towards the end of the story, the main character began doing opium, but when Rowena is very weak, he believes he sees a ghost there with them, and the ghost poisons Rowena, and she dies. But she keeps coming back to life, and then dying again, and then coming back to life, until finally she's turned into Legia. Clearly this is intended to suggest that strength of will can keep one's spirit within the moral realm. This story can be read as an allegory of destructive transcendence. His time with Legia represents original unity. But there is a fall from this unity, her death. Lady Rowena re represents the fallen world. Her destruction occurs and Legia is reborn. This is an imaginative reconstruction of the state of original unity of the universe. Now for our analysis of the fall of the House of Usher. The two Usher characters, Roderick and Madeline, can be read as unusual because they come from a singular line of the Usher family. In other words, at each generation there had only been one child. 
but these two have been split as twins, and therefore their energies have been split. One could read her, Madeline, as representative of the feminine energies, the unconscious world, and Roderick of the masculine energies, the ego or the mind. Their split can be read as diversity and separation that Poe saw as part of the fallen world. This story can be read as an allegory of tr destructive transcendence. The Usher family had been unified until these twins. They represent separation. They must both ultimately be destroyed in order to reunite. Note that they die in each other's arms. Note that there are many elements from this story that are very similar to those seen in Ligia. In both stories, we see the house or room seeming alive. There's also the presence of music in both stories. Both stories deal with the death of a beautiful woman. In addition, the male character seems incomplete without that woman. In both stories, we also see nervous agitation, an acuteness of the sentences. This is a very common theme in Poe's writings, and it could be a result of his own personal opium use. In addition, in both stories, we see a character who's apparently dead, but either is not or comes back to life. The house in The Fall of the House of Usher is symbolic. It ends up serving as a symbol of the disunity that occurs in these generation, this particular generation of siblings. The splitting in this generation of ushers, in other words, two children rather than one, is what created the problem. Like Roderick and Madeline, the house also is destroyed. In the end, this can be read as the ego being reabsorbed into the unconscious, regaining unity between these two elements of the mind. Poe believed that beauty must be connected with the melancholy in some way. He believed that the death of a beautiful woman always combined these elements of beauty and melancholy. We see this in both of the stories, plus in many of other, his other stories as well. 